Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JID Traders Espresso with me, Darius Lomachowskis. Today is the 18th of March 2020, so yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this recorded uh, session for Wednesday. Um, so as always guys, before we jump in, uh, we, we have to quickly read through our uh, risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. It so it's a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. So just a quick mentioning of our JD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course our JD Bank website and specifically our JD research page which we also update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free to visit us here at jdbank.com and click on the research uh, page right here. Now then, let's jump into the charts. Now the first one I want to touch on here is the FTSE 100. Now, um, I've looked at this one recently and basically what I was talking about, uh, I was mentioning these two uh, downside lines. So one is taken from the high of the 24th of February, the other one is <clears throat> excuse me, taken from the high of the 6th of March. So, as you can see, um, <clears throat> excuse me guys, my, my voice is going down a little bit. Um, <clears throat> So, um, the other one is taken from the high of the 6th of March, and basically, the um, uh, yesterday we saw the index uh, closing here in the positive territory and uh, closing near this steep downside line. However, looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the, uh, the price is uh, currently balancing around the psychological 5,000 level, so basically it's now back uh, towards uh, this little territory around here basically it's back to the lows of yesterday so now the big question here is of course uh, at first first of all we can see that this steeper downside line continues to hold the, the other question is can this continue drifting further south now the only thing is that of course as, as you understand yourself that we are quite extended here to the downside and in a way um, everything's kind of uh, looking kind of forward towards a possible recession here but um, um, of course, for now, uh, we should be very careful and cautious and uh, from the technical side, the way we could play this one out is keep your eyes on the uh, yesterday's lows, of course, um, and uh, let me just remove this line, it's a little bit distracting. and. Uh, Yep, the yesterday low was roughly around the 4,978 zone, 80 zone, something like that. So in a way, if we get a drop below that, then maybe we could target lower levels. The only problem here is, of course, the uh, the, the current low of this week, uh, which is basically not far from this 4,869 level. So. And that level, uh, let me show you what what it was here in, in the past. Uh, that level is the lowest point of October 2011. So this is how far we have traveled. Um, and of course, if that area fails to withhold, we could uh, slide towards the lowest point of um, of 2011, and that's roughly around the 4,791 level. So approximately around there. So another good potential target to consider. But as I said. In order to aim, start aiming for lower levels, we would like to see uh, a drop below this uh, low, below the yesterday's low, and then of course below the current low of this week and this 4,869 uh, territory, which is the lowest point of, of October 2011. And then yes, uh, further declines could be possible because this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and. Uh, Yep, more sellers could be joining in. However, of course, uh, don't get me wrong, if this by any chance somehow reverses back to the upside and breaks this steeper downside line, now this is where uh, the, the bulls could get a bit of fresh air um, and uh, we could see this one correcting uh, a little bit higher here towards this uh, downside line, which I've mentioned uh, previously, this uh, downside resistance line taken from the high of the 24th of February. So yep, guys, for now, Keep your eyes on this little steep downside line. Uh, 
the German tax. Now um, here it's a bit of a similar story, like with the uh, with the FTSE 100. Um, yesterday the index uh, managed to uh, climb up here a little bit, and uh, but it still it still remains below this downside line here, taken from the um, high. Let me just bear with me one moment. So it's uh, taken from the high here of the 20th of February. So. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and so now then, um, in a way, of course, the same situation, the same story remains here. Um, we need a clear, uh, we need a clear break here through one of these levels, one of these lows, these current lows of this week, and only then we will get comfortable with further declines. Because again, for now, it's it's a very tricky one because. If we do get a drop below these levels here, the 8,355 or the 8,255, which is the current lowest point of, of this week, then yes, we will aim for further declines. For now, it's, um, like I said, it's very difficult here. Of course, you, know, you understand yourselves. Um, we also have this steeper downside line here as well, the similar story like with the FTSE 100. So um, again, if we get a break of this downside line, then yes, we will aim for a bit of a larger correction here to the upside but for now it's as you can see it's just it's just one-way traffic so um, let's hope we could see maybe a bit of like I said reversal here at some point but again um, again for at this point in time from the very short-term perspective we will remain neutral because in order to aim for lower levels we need to see a break below the current low of this week uh, which is around the uh, 8255 zone and uh, uh, in order to kind of aim for a bit of a, a bit uh, for some higher levels, then yes, we need to see a break of this steeper uh, downside line taken from the high of the 5th of March. And then yes, we will aim for this other downside line. So basically, we'll go for a bit of uh, a correction here, a larger correction. Now, gold. Uh, gold managed to rebound yesterday sharply to the upside. But as you can see, um, this is what I was talking about yesterday. Basically, we need to see a nice good push back with the 1575 zone before we could consider some higher levels again and basically we need to see a, cl a climb back above the upside line here uh, this this upside line uh, taken from the low the 21st of May 2019 um, and then yes we could aim for higher levels but here you can see we did get a boost uh, we did briefly overshoot this upside line but quickly uh, you can see that the uh, the the commodity quickly reversed and kind of this uh, this upside line acted as a good area of resistance and uh, now we're seeing a bit of a drift lower um, don't get me wrong here will be very careful and cautious. And uh, previously I was talking about this level, the 1445. Yes, this level still remains for us as the more important one in order to aim for lower levels. But uh, from the shorter term perspective, you, what you could do here is again, uh, keep your eyes on the uh, this level here, the low of last week. Uh, I do understand we have managed to overcome it, but as you can see, even the daily candles cannot really close above, uh, sorry, below this level. So we keep getting overshoots, but the price keeps coming back and closing the day above this low of last week, uh, which is around the 1505 zone. So we would like to see a nice good drop and a nice good close below this low of last week before we could consider further declines. And in addition to that, um, it would be just also maybe perfect if we would get a nice daily close below the 200 day EMA here, because as you can see also, we keep getting overshoots, but we don't uh, close below. So um, in order to uh, aim for a little bit, to get a little bit more comfortable and aim again for the 1445 level or even below, below that, we would like to see a nice good daily close below this all this territory here that I mentioned so yeah keep your eyes on now uh, and as I said with the upside we need to see a nice big push and a close above the uh, 1575 uh, before we could uh, consider higher levels uh, Brent oil so um, continues to slowly slowly grind lower but um, it's on the right track and um, what I've mentioned um, what I've mentioned this week and last week 
actually basically our target here for now is the lowest point of 2016 and that's around the 27 uh, 15 mark so 27 15 13 approximately around there so we managed to overcome this lowest point of February 2016 which is around the 29.95 uh, that's wonderful um, but now but now it's um, it is uh, drifting uh, further uh, further south and uh, yep the next, like I said the next target is the uh, the lowest point of 2016 so let's see how this is gonna play out because again uh, we could start considering maybe even lower levels but if I look at the monthly chart here um, basically well that's all the data that I have here on this chart so um, in a way um, this is a very critical spot here for now oil continues to drift towards that area area and um, yep uh, let's see how this is gonna play out but uh, let's be very careful at the same time guys um, ethereum now um, here it's a very interesting sp uh, story here we are, we are at a very interesting spot as well so we are can we continue to move around to oscillate around this uh, lowest point of December 2019 and uh, or in other words the um, is that the lowest point of uh, no that's not the lowest point of 2019 but the lowest point of December 2019 so uh, this level here is around the 115.40 mark so as you can see the the crypto really is really enjoying this um, this territory for now um, of course uh, we are kind of really stuck here I would say we're not really moving either down or up um, now we could try to try to maybe examine this potential uh, downside steep downside line so in a way if this downside line continues to hold we could see another slide um, the only problem here is probably to protect yourself and wait for a drop below start off with the um, with this little territory around the 101.50 um, as you can see the um, that that's basically the low of um, the uh, the low of March 12th um, the, it was last week so um, this week um, we saw um, a test of this territory but quickly uh, the the crypto bounced back up here and uh, yep continues to balance below this steep downside line so um, in a way uh, we would like to see maybe a nice good drop at the at on a daily chart here, a daily close maybe even below this 101.50 uh, and then yep we could aim of course initially for the uh, the lowest point of last week which is around the 89.80 but then slightly below that we do have the lowest point of 2018 and that's around the um, let me just quickly double check that that's around the 80.50 territory so a good level to watch but again some current confirmation breaks would be needed so uh, uh, we need to see a drop below the uh, 101.50 and then we could aim for further declines. Of course, straightforward here, um, if we get a <clears throat> A push through the uh, through this downside line then well we could consider a bit of a, a larger correction to the upside for now um, any kind of move higher still could be seen as, as a as a temporary correction before another leg of selling because we are also below this uh, downside resistance line taken from the high of the 19th of February um, again very quickly on my one of my favorite um, metrics here for the coronavirus uh, US dollar against the Singapore dollar as you can see the situation with the coronavirus is not getting better and uh, yep we can see that uh, straight away on this pair so uh, after breaking this key area of resistance the highest point of February near the 1.4088 the pair continues to drift higher and is now um, kind of even um, it's already it's already trying to surpass the yesterday's high and uh, let me just quickly put that one on the chart um, so <clears throat> Is that yep yeah, there we go and that's around the 1.43 24 25 zone so it's trying to overcome this um, I mean don't get me wrong it, it might continue drifting further north um, but let me just quickly show you what's happening here so this is what I was mentioning yesterday guys and uh, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this 200 um, EMA here on the monthly chart as you can see we are climbing above it now and the big question here is can this monthly candle stay 
stay above this because this is where it's going to be very interesting to watch because if we stay above this then I mean I mean this could continue drifting further north and uh, basically uh, last time it was trading uh, comfortably above this 200 EMA on the monthly chart was back in uh, March and April and May June to 2001 and of course we did get a brief drop here but then it quickly come came back in the end of the year in the end of 2001 and kind of continued to drift above this uh, for about a few months uh, in, in in 2002 and then after that it drifted below it so now we're again we're uh, climbing back above this 200 e uh, 200 EMA on the monthly chart so let's see if the uh, if we can get a close a monthly close above this uh, above this line uh, USD CAD so something also which is quite uh, radical here and that's the uh, USD CAD so yep um, of course let me just clear this chart again um, we did get a, an explosion here to the upside we um, especially yesterday you can see that the pair drifted all the way here to the 1.4277 mark and as you can see now, um, it's kind of today it's trading a little bit below this, but don't get me wrong. I mean, this could continue drifting further, further north. However, um, from the shorter term perspective, um, of course, uh, we are quite overstretched. And let's say if we look at this uh, four-hour chart, uh, we could keep an eye on this little um, upside support line here, uh, taken from the low of the sixth uh, of March. And in a way, if if this pair uh, uh, by any chance, let's say from the short term perspective, how we could look at this, if it drops below the uh, the current low of today, which is around the 1.4162, that's where it could become a little bit more interesting for the sellers because we could then uh, drag this one uh, a little bit lower towards this upside support line. Um, now this is where it could become very interesting. Um, but again, don't get me wrong, uh, for now we're very careful and cautious and um, it's, like I said, it's still, the, it's still oil continues to depreciate and if oil continues to depreciate, the Canadian dollar depreciates as well. So yep, uh, the, that, that currency is heavily linked, well, very linked to the price of oil. So that's what you, what you could do here guys is basically for now keep your eyes on the, uh, this, on these two levels, basically keep your eyes on the high of, of yesterday near the 1.4277 a nice pop above this could open the path towards higher levels but if this uh, breaks the 1.4162 mark this is where it could become interesting and uh, we could see a deeper uh, slide to the downside here so that's why guys for now be very careful with this one it is quite overstretched and uh, not only on the daily chart it's even overstretched on the monthly chart here but as I said if it pushes above the high of yesterday um, then yep, we'll aim for higher levels. As you can see, we do have a nice potential target here, uh, which is the highest point of 2016, and that's roughly around the 1.4690, so good possible target. Uh, so yep, let's see if it could reach that if if it breaks above the 1.4277 zone. Uh, let's me jump back into a daily here and jump into GBPUSD. So um, again, uh, after it kind of managed to retrace here a little bit, so it per worked out perfectly tri drifted further down towards the 1.2195 and even overshot it and is now kind of uh holding its path uh, towards the 1.1960 mark which is the uh, the lowest point of September 2019 and it's also the lowest point of 2019 so again something to look forward to something to aim for and uh, again for now we're getting a bit of a correction which is quite normal given the steep uh, downfall the uh, down move that we had here um, so in a way we could what we could do here is if it corrects a little bit higher but fails to push back above the 1.2195 zone then yep uh, we will aim for another round of selling where we will initially target only the lowest point of 2019 first uh, which is around the 1.1959 uh, 60 zone so and then if of course if this uh, gets a hold up here then uh, we could um, it's, we'll, we'll take it from there we could see maybe a bit of a rebound here um, if this decides to push uh, further further north 
and uh, pushes above the 1.2275 territory, then, well, I mean, we could maybe get, get ourselves here a larger correction. So that's why we're keeping an eye on this 1.2275, which is the high of yesterday. And if we do get a nice push above it, then yes, we will aim for a bit of uh, a large, a bit of a larger correction here to the upside. And finally, euro dollar. Um, so yesterday I talked about this one, and let me just jump back into a four-hour chart. So what I was saying that um, this is going to be our target, and we managed to reach that, um, and uh, we've tested this area around the 1.09.49 50 zone. Um, then what I was talking about was that if we may get a correction here, we may get a correction from here, which we got. So that's perfect, working out nicely. Um, and uh, what I was also saying that if this, uh, if the rate struggles to push above the uh, this 1.1054 zone, then maybe we could see another round of selling. So for now, we are seeing that move lower here. Um, Again, we will target this 1.09.49, 50 territory, but if this gets broken, now this is where we will aim for lower levels again, because basically, long story short, guys, we would like to see um, a drop below this 1.09.50 territory um, in order to kind of aim for lower levels, because for now, we're, like I said, we are, let's say, quite over, uh, well, we, we did get a nice, decent move already to the downside, so maybe it could even go for a bit of a, a larger correction here, um, now, I've removed this uh, previous downside line and I want to draw a new one here taken from the high of the 9th of March. And uh, you can see that, yes, I mean, we could keep this one. It's a very tentative line, don't get me wrong. Uh, but um, still, we'll, we'll keep that on chart for now. Basically, for the downside, for further declines, uh, we need to see a drop below this 1.09.49, 50 zone, uh, in order to aim for lower levels, because this would confirm a forthcoming lower low. And uh, yep, uh, our next target could be around the 1.08.80 or the 1.08.60 zone so roughly around there but uh, I'll reevaluate this again um, once we get closer to the territory if the pair decides to drift back about the 1.10 uh, 54 mark we will uh, stay neutral in general for now even we will stay a little bit more on the neutral side because for us to consider the upside looking at this technical picture here we would like to see a push back above this upside support line and only then target the upside now previously I had the level here, of course, this is still the more comfortable obstacle for us uh, after which we could consider the upside, but if this travels um, above the one point, uh, or should I say, if it travels above this upside support line, then yes, we will aim for the uh, for some higher levels again, because this would also place the rate above all of its EMAs here on the four hour chart. So something to consider, guys. Okay, guys, I really hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for uh, sticking around and watching it till the end. Um, again, apologies for not running this one uh, as a live version because, again, due to certain uh, coronavirus circumstances, yep, uh, this has to be done for, for now temporarily like this. Uh, but yes, as I said before, we will resume uh, the live sessions um, later on. So, but uh, give it a few weeks, guys, um, and then, yes, we, uh, we will resume the live session. For now, thank you very much for sticking around and still watching me. And uh, yep, yeah, thank you very much, guys, for all your support. Um, I'll see you later at my traders' tea time uh, around or a little bit around after 14 15 uh, GMT time. Have a nice trading day.